Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode we have Netflix 323rd film from 2020. It's the musical comedy The Prom directed by Ryan Murphy. It stars Meryl Streep, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Keegan-Michael Key, Andrew Rennells, Joe Allen Pellman, Ariana DeBose, Tracy Ullman, Kevin Chamberlain, Mary Kay Place, and Kerry Washington. What a cast. I am Jesse. I'm your host. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, big cast, big film, um, big Netflix production, I guess we've got to say as well. So as always, if uh, you haven't seen this film, you know, four years since it was released and you're keen on checking it out, I will spoil this as we go. So do give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because we kick the show off with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. So this one is about a school who blocks a teenage girl from attending prom with her girlfriend. So a bunch of Broadway stars come to save the day. Uh, that's the gist of it in a, and amongst a, a lot of uh, musical numbers and dance performances. So uh, let, let's talk about how this ended up on Netflix. How did Netflix uh, come up or come with this title? So this, uh, this, this film, it's based on the same premise of an actual musical that has the same name, uses the music by Matthew Schuyler with lyrics by Chad Belglin and a book by Bob Martin and Boyogan as well. And it's based on an original concept by Jack Vertel. The film is also loosely based around an actual real life event from 2010, the Itawamba County School District prom controversy, which, uh, you know, this film follows some of those events as well. So CNN, they note that the film project is on theme with Murphy's, the director, advocacy for more inclusivity in Hollywood, including his spearheading the 2017 HALF initiative to create equal representation for women and minorities behind the camera. Murphy announced plans for the adaptation during a charity performance of the musical at New York's Longass Theatre in April of 2019. So we head to June of 2019, where a majority of the cast are announced. Ariana Grande was initially cast as Alyssa, um, the character Alyssa in this film, uh, who's the popular but closeted cheerleader and Emma's girlfriend. But scheduling conflicts with her world tour um, forced Ariana Grande to drop out. Ariana DeBose joined in November, replacing Grande in that role of Alyssa. Uh, Joe Allen Pellman was also cast as Emma following a nationwide search. This project is the first film under Murphy's $300 million deal with Netflix and his fifth piece of work with Netflix overall. We go to January of 2020 where Aquafina was actually uh, in, the, in the cast as well and dropped out because of scheduling conflicts. Filming commenced on December the 11th, 2019 in LA, and on March the 12th of 2020, production was suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to this, the leads had already wrapped filming with only two days of second unit filming left, which was initially scheduled to resume, resume in mid-April, but was delayed until the summer with uh, it resuming on the 23rd of July, 2020. Although, and this is an interesting story, the original actors from the Broadway um, performance of this show they all auditioned for for the roles in the film as well ryan murphy the director he decided to go with his starfield cast in said instead the film uh, ha had an awards qualifying limited theatrical release on december the 4th 2020 before it hit netflix worldwide on december the 11th it was the second most watched film over its weekend on the platform but it did drop to 10th in its second weekend. So quite a big um, drop there as well. Around the world, what's the film called? So in, uh, and obviously the English title, The Prom, relates to a very American sort of, uh, you know, uh, event that occurs uh, in teenagers' lives. But in Spanish, it's called The Dance. Um, okay, it's not really revolving around dance, but that's all right, there are some dance components. In Portuguese and Chinese, it's called The Graduation Party. In Hungarian and Vietnamese, it's called The Prom, The Graduation Ball. So they've included the two of them. In Polish, it's just called Ball. And in Russian, it's called High School Graduation. Now, this one did have a couple of taglines. So the big one on most of the posters was, everyone deserves a chance to celebrate. Yeah, not bad. It, you know, ties in nicely with this film. There was another one, Broadway's new musical comedy. So that doesn't give you much. And the other one had multiple versions of this. So it was like, so it's time to celebrate. And then it changed the word at the end. So it's time to celebrate either change, kind, friendship, acceptance, dreams, love, courage, and hope. So obviously those things are all uh, big themes in this film that we'll probably talk about a little bit later on as well. So uh, this, as I said, did have a limited theatrical release. It took $187,000 at the box office. It did have some wins. It had five wins on the award circuit with a further 29 nominations. 
Two of those noms were at the Golden Globes, so it was nominated for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, and also Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy for James Corden. Also, obviously, those nominations included a lot of craft, editing, costume, makeup, music, songwriting, all that sort of stuff. So, obviously, uh, recognised by a fair few amount of people, this film. What were the critics and audiences saying at the time of the release for this film? So, Rotten Tomatoes, it's rotten. It sits at 54%. That's on 212 reviews. So, a lot of critics actually saw this film. The audience, a tiny bit higher. It's at 61%. That's on more than 1,000 ratings. IMDb, 29,000 ratings, so not, not too many really when you think about it. It sits at a 5.9 out of 10, so again, not not necessarily, it wouldn't be hitting fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Letterboxd sits at a 2.3 out of 5 on 78,000 ratings. That's a lot of ratings, and that is very low. <laughs> it's, and it's been logged on Letterboxd by 117,000 people. Huge numbers. Uh, Metacritic sits at a 55 out of 100 on 35 critic reviews. So that is on that yellow in the traffic light system. So sitting in the middle. However, the audience, this is probably the highest from the audience. It sits at a 6.3 out of 10 on 98 reviews. That is in the green category on Metacritic. What are my early thoughts on this film? Um, it's tricky. I had high expectations for this film because I'm a big fan of most of Ryan Murphy's work. But the first 30 minutes, oh, sorry, not 30, the first 20 minutes of this film I nearly had to turn it off and be like, I need to come back and watch this later because I hated every bit of it and I was really worried. It did find its groove once the Broadway crew arrive in Indiana and I did get into it into the back half, but the start really uh, threw me off quite a bit. So let's get into the crux of it and let's talk about this film. So what are the characters? Let's talk about the characters. So Emma is, I guess the the film is really her story. She's the, the, the girl who's been rejected by her town, by her school, her peers, her parents, and all because she wants to take someone of the same sex to her prom. And, you know, obviously this stems from her parents kicking her out of her house and the trauma when she was younger. But she is such a strong individual who's proud of who she is, even though she's had to face many challenges. And, and that's where everyone else sort of comes in and is a role and is involved in her story because our Broadway crew or our, our, our Broadway actors and actresses, they, they come to support her cause. So Dee Dee, um, Meryl Streep, she's this self-obsessed Broadway diva, I guess. Uh, you know, she's stressed about... Uh, her co-star Barry, and we'll talk about Barry in a second, but how her and Barry's latest show has been a disaster and, and the need for good PR and turning their careers around. So th we do get some backstory about her starting off dirty poor and, and finding love and being divorced and all the troubles with that and, and how her ex-husband was only interested in her because of her money and not because he loved her. And, and, and you know, we do see a little bit of change um, in her. Like she obviously wants to lead this charge to support Emma and change. And, and through the principal of the school, we do see a little bit of change in her character too. And I'll talk about him soon as well. But Barry, I guess, was the one I mentioned before, DD sort of co-star, played by James Corden. He's this manic gay stereotype played by a straight man. And I think that's where a lot of criticism around this film has come because I'm not sure that James Corden plays it off. And, and he's probably the worst part of this film for me as well. Uh, he obviously went through a similar experience to Emma when he was younger. Um, you know, he left his parents because they didn't accept him. And, and his journey in this, I guess, is reconciling with his family, even though if it's, you know, a bit of a side story in this film. The other uh, two people, we have Angie, played by Nicole Kidman. So she's come from Broadway too. She's like the, the doll of the group. Um, she's always been rejected for roles that she's wanted. And she's sort of been stuck in this life of always being a part of the chorus in, in stage shows. She has a bit of a reliance on alcohol to get her through this stage in her life as well. But she's a good comfort to Emma um, at various stages as well. And the other person that comes along is Trent. Um, <laughs> Trent is a bit of an, an outsider in this uh, Broadway group. He's a Juilliard grad, tells everyone about that multiple times. But he's sort of struggled to break that Broadway scene. So, you know, he has to do bartending in between gigs and, and small traveling shows to towns. And that's how they manage to, to get out to Indiana as well. The other two main characters in this film... Principal Hawkins, he's the one supportive person at the school who is pushing to allow Emma to the prom. So it's nice that she actually has someone at school on her side. He, he The other side thing too, he has, he has a love of theatre and he knows Dee Dee and his um, almost obsession of her um, means that he's allowed to be the person that ends up helping her and adjust her selfishness to look at how to support others too. The other character, Alyssa, which is Emma's girlfriend. So we find out they've been together for a year and a half and has kept this a secret because her mother is the head of the PTA and she's the one who is anti-gay, anti-allowing this prom to go ahead because she believes she's upholding the values of the town. And she also has to, 
you know, uh, Mrs. Alyssa, she's got to uphold these high values that her mum set out as well because, you know, her mum puts that stress and pressure on her that, you know, if, if we're good, if we're the perfect family, your dad might come back. And that's such a horrible thing for a teenager to have to think about, um, I really think. Um, the director, Ryan Murphy, I sort of spoke him up before about how much I like his work and, and his producing work. And I guess he's known a lot for his TV work, including Glee. You know, Glee was such a big show when that came out. The American Horror Story anthology series as well. He's got 47 producer credits and obviously that's a lot of credits as well as 25 directing credits i guess the best film or the biggest film most people would know would be eat pray love and i guess one of my favorite miniseries that netflix has actually put out is called hollywood um or hollywood hollywood land i can't remember exactly what it was called i think it was hollywood i thought that was great that was, that was such a good series i would rewatch that any day of the week so obviously lots of good work um let's talk about some scenes that i liked in this one some scenes i didn't like so what did i like so i think the first part I could, um, the first part I really could handle in this film was when the Broadway crew actually rocked up at the um, PTA meeting at the school and Dee Dee breaks into this song about the situation, um, about the whole situation not being about her. It's it's all about Emma. Um, and it was very funny, like, you know, lines like, you know, I read three quarters of the news story about it and knew I had to come and help. I just thought that was funny just showing you her uh, insecurities and her absolute um, self-absorption. <laughs> uh, a few of the songs are right. There was a, a song about acceptance that they sang at this monster truck rally. I thought that was funny. There was a promposal song uh, that was that was cleverly done. The Mainly because the football guy, I don't know, he just really uh, lit the screen up for me. I thought he was good. The theater escapism song by the principal Hawkins. That was also good too. Um, and there was this song where there was a montage of the girls all getting ready for prom. And one of the lines was, um, you know, even I would do me the way I looked. I thought that was quite funny too. A lot of the lyrics were really clever in a lot of the songs. i got to give credit for that. Uh, there's a scene where Emma walks into this empty gym for the prom and it was cruel. It was hard. It was heartbreaking. It was sad. Even if it was so obvious that that's what was going to happen. <laughs> like as an audience, you could pick that up straight away. Uh, there's a moment where after this, Angie spends some time with Emma, Nicole Kidman's character, eating ice cream, listening to her worries. And they do this jazz dance to get, you know, the zazz back into her life. I thought that was good. I liked that scene. And then while that's happening, we have this moment of Dee Dee and Barry in the hotel talking about their challenges in life and, and Dee Dee and her divorce and Barry and his parents not being there. That was nicely done too. Uh, Dee Dee has this song where she goes to apologize to Principal Hawkins and she goes into his office and the song is all about her improving as a lady. I thought that was clever. And the highlight of this, the film for me was this song in the the mall, in the shopping center, in the food court. There's um, Trent. He does this song about the ideological divide of Christian values, just about cherry picking the Bible and, and loving thy neighbor. That was excellent. That was so good. Um, finally, Emma does this live video too, this song that she puts online about coming out with people online singing back to her. That was really one day, really well done too. Um, I think it was called The Unruly Heart of Mine. Yeah, so that was good too. Um, what didn't I like in this one? I think... As I said before, the first few songs, the Eleanor musical, the song Out on the Street um, after that, after that performance, Emma's first song about breathing, they all didn't land. I really struggled at the start of this film. That really, really um, made this a, a bit of a struggle to start with. I didn't like Alyssa and Emma singing, you know, they sang this song behind the bleachers. That, the song was fine, but then they go to kiss and this car rocks up and Alyssa's like, my mum's here, I've got to go. And we already know that her mum is so anti-Emma. Just the fact that her car parks there and she sees the two of them there by herself and her mum's fighting so hard about this because, you know, that the same-sex idea doesn't go with her values. Just the fact that the mum wouldn't recognise what was happening, that was really bad. I thought that was poor. The Broadway crew, they rock up at the hotel in Indiana to check in and they make this big, big deal about wanting a suite or a cabin and, and dropping their trophies to sort of on the counter to show who they are, like it means something. Not needed dance breaks like most of the songs have these dance breaks that just added to the runtime they didn't add anything they would look good on stage i get that but anytime a song had this dance break or finished on a chorus in the song like visually yes good choreography didn't need it like in the film form i just just wasted time um bobby's forgiveness scene with his mum didn't like that and finally dd and principal hawkins kissing at the end that was just gross i don't know i just did, did not see those two as a couple that was really awkward uh, what's the film trying to say some themes some ideas some motifs obviously tolerance acceptance love thy neighbor that idea of empathy you know conservative america versus liberal america that's all there too you've got celebrities and their activism they're, they're wanting to change the world and the, the, the deep thing is that idea of the right to love who you want you know having that courage to stand up to other, others and have that courage to be who you are and too i like that idea too that theater can provide an escape from the real the real world not just theater but but arts in general i like that too um what did i take away from this film <laughs> indiana that that indiana i tell you what 
they copped a beating in this film. Like some of the derogatory words and comments about the people that live there. I'm don't, I don't know how well this uh, this film would have played there. So that was a little bit, um, you know, I feel bad for them a bit. <laughs> All right, IMDb. We have a moment where, did we jump on IMDb to check anyone out early? I had to pause the film because I mentioned this um, sort of in the information about the film, but I had to look up Emma and sort of confirm that she was being represented properly because James Corbin, obviously Corden, obviously is um, is a heterosexual man and he's playing a gay character. And I would have felt really ripped off if Emma wasn't a queer character. So, or sorry, a queer person in real life. So I found out that Ryan Murphy cast Pellman as the protagonist in the film after this nationwide search. Um, and it's her film debut. And Murphy said that, she spoke very movingly about being a queer woman and having a gay single mum who raised her. I remember she walked out and I was just like, thank God that's over, we've found our girl. I really liked that idea in the story. So that was really good. Questions, ponderings, I've touched on this already. Like James Corden, like poor casting. Did he work for you? Like he did not work for me. I just really could not stand him in this role. Um, I know he did the Cats musical film as well. I've kept away from that and I'm probably gonna stay even further away from it. Probably won't even hit my radar anytime soon because I just couldn't stand him in this. Um, I'm ready to wrap it up. We give the film a rating out of five on this show. So like, you know, I, I am stuck on this because the start was so horrendously bad. But maybe it, it was just that I wasn't aware of what I needed to focus on or, or be engaged in to be involved in the type of film this was going to be because it did pick up once they got to Indiana. But I can't look past that start because, you know, I, I thought, oh, cool, maybe I'll go back and watch the first 20 minutes again just to, you know, try again from where I'm at. But I just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, There are some good songs in here, some good messages. It's two and a half out of five for me, two and a half for me. Fairly okay rating, it's not horrendous, but two and a half. We're on socials, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, and we have X, formerly known as Twitter. All I wanted to know is, um, I guess, who's the most courageous character in this film on our socials? Let us know who's the most courageous character. I think Emma's probably the easiest one to say, but who are some other courageous characters in this film? Because, um, you know, it's hard to like the celebrities in this film, but are any of them actually courageous? Like, obviously, their their motive in, in doing what they were doing was self self-absorbing and, and, and self-beneficial, but do any of them actually have some good traits? Are any of them courageous? I reckon Nicole Kidman's character, um, Angie, possibly was probably the nicest out of all of them, but again, her role was pretty small. So I don't know. That's it. I don't have, I've tried to talk about this film as much as I could. We are back next week. Next week, we have a Christmas film. So we're, we are still heading towards the back end of the 2020 Netflix films. It is uh, a Christmas film from 2020 called A California Christmas. This one is directed by Sean Pacino and stars Lauren Swickard and Josh Swickard. Um, that's what we've got. We've covered a lot of Christmas films in the back end of 2020. So hopefully this one stands out above the others and, and it's worth a watch. I will let you net. I will let you know next week. So hopefully you join me then, and uh, make sure you watch it if you're going to join me too. So I will see you next week. As always, thank you.